How's this feel, Georgia? Oh, it's amazing. Um, you know, there's been so many kind of setbacks this season and, you know, even last night with COVID swab 10, 30, 11 at night. So uh, to come out here and play the way that we did today, I couldn't be prouder of the girls and, you know, it's first title for Queensland. It, it's really sweet. How are you feeling out there in the middle during that century? Uh, not very great for most of it, to be honest. I struggled a lot, but, um, you know, really benefited from the girls around me. I thought Georgia Bowl did really well at the start to set the tone and the way Michaela Hinckley batted today was outstanding and, and probably helped me get going in the middle there so I could finish it off. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a great team performance and, and the way our bowlers came out really disciplined, I thought, you know, got them behind the count early and, and able to finish it off. So, um, yeah, it was an amazing day and a great team performance, I thought. Yeah, at least finding obviously player of the tournament. Mm. It's really tied down by your bowlers. Was there a certain plan or, or something you were expecting? Um, we just really, we going off the game that we played against them last time, we probably bowled too much width to her and we just really wanted to keep it really tight and, and know that we knew she was the key to their lineup. So, um, you know, she might not be batting as freely as maybe she did um, last time we played them. So if we could keep it really good lengths on, on off stump, um, we knew she wouldn't tr probably take too many risks there and then try to get her behind on the count and build pressure that way. And Lily Mills, in just her second game, picks up three wickets in the final. She was incredible. She's worked so hard all year and um, it's been really tough for her, obviously JJ being kind of our number one spinner. So um, the way that she's came out, um, she probably didn't bowl as well as she would have liked, bowled in some tough periods in, in her first game against New South Wales. And um, she came out here from ball one, bowling in the power play, she was spot on and um, picked up three really key wickets too. And um, yeah, her economy, she probably only went about three and over. So um, yeah, she was a, a real key bowler for us today. How well has the squad been able to step up this season with a few outs and players in now the team with injury and Aussie duties? Yeah, it's been, um, it's really nice to see. Really proud of them all, obviously. And um, yeah, I think Courtney Sipple's really stepped up this season, coming into the team, debuted in the first game and has played all, all the games and um, been, been really consistent bowler for us. And um, I think the way Georgia Presswich has come back after missing out on a few games, she's been, um, you know, much improved and, and really deserved a spot there too. And um, it's made it a bit hard, hard for selection at times and um, yeah, I think the way the young girls have stood up, I think everyone at some point this season has really contributed um, all the way down the order. So it's, it's really pleasing. I think, you know, we've got, you know, we've got a squad of 13 here today, but everyone's a, you know, really deserving um, title holder and, and the girls that aren't here too. And the season didn't start that well for you guys. It was in the first two games and I think Holly said you guys kind of gathered in a room and as players and talked about how you were going to approach the rest of the season. How did that change things? Yeah, I think we can give a lot of that down to JJ and the way that she's led this group. Um, we didn't get off to the start that we wanted at all. We probably lost two of the games to two of the teams that we thought would have been easier wins than uh, perhaps some of the ones that we came up against later. So um, we're really disappointed kind of the way that we played and obviously rain was affecting it as well. So. Um, I think the way that we bounced back, JJ obviously sat us down in a room and we had some really frank discussions and um, from then it's kind of our backs were against the wall so we knew we had to win and we had to win big and I think we came out and won with three extra bonus points in the two games against WA the following week so I think the way that we bounced back from there and our whole second, back end of the season has been brilliant um, and I've been yeah really impressed by everyone with all the contributions. And can you just take us back to last night, when did you find out that things have changed and that you needed to have a test? Well, I was about to go to bed um, and I think a few of our girls were in bed, um, maybe around nine o'clock um, and the WhatsApp messages just went crazy. I think um, Paul Michaela was like, what, woken up to about 20 messages about getting swabs and um, we had to declare that we hadn't been in hot spots and had to do it within like five minutes and I think by the time the, the they were brilliant actually, the, um, the health workers who came in to swab us, they came in maybe somewhere between 10 and 10.30, um, but yeah, it was brilliant. They did each floor of the hotel and um, it was really efficient and um, yeah, it's a bit of a nervous wait overnight, waiting for them all to come back negative, but um, yeah, it was really nice. I think they kind of put us up the, the pecking order a bit so we were able to get the results back really quick. So yeah, really appreciate all the work from the CA medical staff um, with that one. Yeah, big relief this morning, I think 7am it all got given the clip. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the first thing I did when I woke up, I checked my phone and to see a message from Vic Health or something. So um, big sigh of relief and um, that we're all able to get out here and play today. And um, yeah, obviously there's a bit of a bit of rain at the start of the day, but you know that probably settles settled us a bit because we're so used to the rain this season. So um, yeah, it, it was really nice to get out there and play full 50 overs. And just 
with the Heat winning two trials in recent years, now WNCL for Queensland. What will this mean for Queensland cricket? Oh, it's so special. I think, you know, the Queensland Fire have been in five or six finals maybe. And, um, yeah, I think we're going through a really nice little period at the moment. Obviously, kind of had some pretty good consistency in WBBL, even though we didn't win this year with the Heat. Um, kind of really competitive in the semifinals. And, um, yeah, winning our first WMCL title, I think it shows the good talent that's coming through throughout the system. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can... We can try to create a little, um, you know, uh, kind of try to replicate what New South Wales have done over the years. So we'd love to, we, we said that this isn't the pinnacle for us. We want to be here, you know, four or five years down the track as well. Like being consistent, making the final and winning, ch winning titles. Roger, it's been a pretty intense season for you guys between the WBBL hub and the ups and downs of the schedule changes. <laughs> How satisfying is it to finish off with the, with the win in the WNCL? Yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's been a long season, kind of, yeah, May, June that we started. And back at that time, we didn't know we'd, we'd be playing any games. And to get the whole WBBL in the hub, obviously, it was challenging for some people. And um, But I think for the most part, we really embraced it. And we're just so happy to be playing and um, to kind of come back here. It's probably quite unique having all of our WMCL matches after the Big Bash. So um, despite our slow start, which we seem to have a bit of a habit of, um, it was, yeah, it was really nice to kind of come out and finish the season and I think just the way the whole tournament's been run, it's been so flexible with the scheduling, um, which is great. I think it, it um, puts CA in a really good light and the way that we're, we're switching grounds against ACT and, um, you know, the states are changing dates of games, like, real, like um, you know, really short notice. Um, the way that that was able to happen to bring the tournament together, I think, was exceptional. And what does the next little bit look like for you? Back to work? <laughs> yeah, I need to find a job. Um, yeah, I think well, I'll probably have a little, little bit of time off and then, um, yeah, go go locum job hunting on the on the medical network. So, um, yeah, probably get a bit of work in during the off-season and then, yeah, once we start up back, yeah, June-ish, I'll, I'll be back training and hopefully a bit of work on the side, but we'll see how we go. And celebrations tonight? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, Ruthie's going to get a bit, bit of a tour around our hotel and probably around everywhere we go for the next week. Um, We'll probably stay here for a little while and then, um, yeah, see, see where it takes us, I think. Um, I'm not sure whether we're able to reserve the area at our hotel, but we'll <laughs> see. Um, obviously not the result you guys wanted today, Junior. What do you take out of the match? Yeah, um, disappointing to um, have a really great season as a team and, and finish that way. Um, really proud of the girls. There's, you know, a lot of inexperience in the side, but really pleased the way that sort of went out and attacked it. And um, yeah, obviously Queensland are a pretty quality side and um, really well led today by Georgia Redmayne. So um, yeah, we just weren't quite up to the task, but I'm, I'm certainly proud of everyone's effort. What do you think the younger players might take out of this? They obviously don't get much game time when the Aussies are around, but they've got three games and pressure games with now. Yeah, exactly. I think it's about, um, learning to execute their skills under pressure and they can certainly take out, um, there's nothing like playing out in the middle. You can have all the net sessions in the world but really nothing simulates a game like being a part of a match and playing under pressure as well is, is key in their development. So um, I was really pleased the way that they went out and batted today. I thought that was a real step up from um, the two games against Perth. So I think just knowing that, um, you know, we want to keep pushing the game forward and execution is key with both the bat and the ball and um, we talk about making errors but making sure that we make positive ones and I felt like um, for the most part today we made some really positive errors and um, if that's the way that, that girls are being dismissed then so be it. Yeah, she's a ripper. Um, we always joke about the fact that she probably took six months to warm up. Um, the the Kimmy that you sort of get the impression of um, when I used to play against her when she represented Ireland, um, and then what you actually um, get behind the scenes are two diff very different Kimmies, and we bloody love her here. Um, but she's a, a super, super talented cricketer um, and a real um, addition to the Victorian setup with both bat, ball, and in the field. Yeah, I think she looks really clear out in the middle at the moment. She looks um, like she's got a real plan of how she wants to score. Um, and we've just seen that sort of come into fruition over the last two, two innings for her. So she's a you know really positive batter and I've loved um, seeing her go out there and, and score that way and really look to, to put the pressure back on the, the bowlers. So um, she's certainly a talented cricketer. And I know you take a trophy over player of the tournament, but does it mean something to you to get that into um, yeah, look, it's, it's probably um, something that I'm not 
thinking about at the minute. It's obviously a really disappointing um, time um, to sort of end our season like that. But um, yeah, I think it's probably something I'll sort of think about um, heading into the next year and um, how I sort of went about my cricket today. And um, sorry, not today, <laughs> um, but this season is something that I look to take into future seasons. So um, I am really proud of the way that I've gone about it um, and I'm, I'm really happy with my process and I want to make sure I'm sticking to that in the future seasons but for today it's just um, yeah pretty pretty disappointing. Do you get a bit of time off now and uh, get into the 100? Yeah I've got a bit of time off actually um, I'm not sure if Cricket Victoria are aware of it but I'm, I'm taking time off as of tomorrow <laughs> uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to a bit of a break to be honest and um, do some comms work on the Aussie New Zealand series for Fox and um, get over to the 100 um, and represent the Trent Rockets and um, I really enjoy that. It means less season in pre um, less time in pre-season. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a bit of time off and going on holidays and, and just relaxing and, and being a, a normal person. And players junior like Tess Fentoff and Cole Fulton with the groups, how beneficial do you think it would be for them to get that 50 or yeah, um, huge. Like they're they're all really exciting cricketers, and they're all really young, and they obviously haven't had a lot of opportunity at the moment. But they're incredibly talented, and I, I really like the way that at the moment all three of them seem to really clear out in the middle and really clear on what they want to achieve. And um, as I keep reiterating to them, if we're making positive errors, and that's something that you know more than okay with, and I just love the way they're going about their business at the moment, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where they can take their game next season.